Um, I think, uh, I think I like, I thought like a product manager, even when I didn't have this role, you know, if that makes sense, um, essentially, uh, you know, I had the mindset of, um, uh, what is the consumer need in the market that our company can fulfill, uh, in the most efficient and effective way. And would someone pay for it or would someone use this every day? And, you know, and that's the stuff that product managers are thinking about every single day. Uh, I was just in different roles and product management was not such a big, um, you know, uh, scope as well, uh, at least when I started my career. So when I got the opportunity to step in the shoes uh, of a product manager or work with people who were product managers, I actually quite enjoyed the challenge uh, of the role and the depth and the breadth of it. Uh, the role also involves, uh, you know, working with everyone from engineering to design uh, to operations, marketing, legal, PR, and even sales. So I quite enjoyed that experience, uh, but I, I, I feel that I'm still a marketer at heart, uh, yeah. you know, so who knows i might just go back to marketing later because that comes so naturally to me uh and, and it really lights me up uh but then in any case you know i talk to a lot of uh you know marketing graduates uh, these days who are thinking of moving to either product marketing and they want to understand the difference between you know normal marketing product marketing or at least consumer marketing and product marketing or product management uh and marketing you know i tell them is not just about creative anymore uh, it used to be, I mean, creative has a huge role to play, I would say, but to be successful in being a marketer, it's also about uh, understanding the consumer and that understanding uh, today comes from data, yeah. you know, right. uh, it could come from research and, and anywhere else earlier, but today you have to run your own experiments, you have to do A-B testing, you have to segment your audiences, run those tests, uh, you know, have your hypothesis, prove it, and then go to your CMO and say that this is what worked, this is what didn't work, and therefore we should spend our money here versus there, rather than reading some research and saying consumers in India behave in a certain way and yeah. therefore we should do uh, X, right? And then when you connect that with what a product manager is good at, you know, every product manager, a good product manager is very comfortable playing with data and deriving insights from data. So a PM who comes from marketing uh, and does a PM role can easily go back and be an even better data-driven marketer overall. So yeah, I think baby tech is new, um, you know, and lots is going on uh, in this sector. Um, so what what is essentially baby tech, right? It's using technology to either make the lives of newborns better or to make the lives of parents better, which is parenting. Yeah. And and any company which is you know doing disruptive work in 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 this field is considered a part of the baby tech sector. Um, but if you look at like what, you know, Hubble at Hubble, we are an IOT company uh, and, you know, our what what all we want to do is bring, bring peace of mind uh, to parents and, you know, help them focus on what matters the most. And we do that through making all things from baby monitors to soothers to sleep trackers, you know, and all of which uh, kind of connects with an app, uh, our Hubble Club app. Uh, where parents can actually go and look at the insights you know so you're you're at work and you want to look at your baby um you know and and you know somebody's at home probably watching the baby over a parent unit and then you can open your app and you can actually watch your baby from a distance you can see if they're sleeping they're playing um so i think and all those things have become very important to parents recently like millennial parents so if you look at the market size for baby monitoring companies uh, or, or the demand for baby monitoring, it is estimated to reach, um, I guess, around $3 billion by 2026. So that's a huge market share. Uh, and then this doesn't even cover the adjacents uh, to the category like soothing, sleep training and various different types of tracking. Um, you know, with the advent of all of these Fitbits and the smart watches and Apple Watch, all of us like to track every single thing, right? We're tracking our sleep, we're tracking what we eat, we're tracking the steps taken. Uh, so why not for babies and, and parents who track their own, uh, you know, macros like to track these things for their babies as well. So what we've learned is that new age parents 
are very conscious parents. Uh, millennials are also more data driven than their predecessors. So technology really has a huge role to play on how parenting is being looked at. Um, I think if you were to think about like top, if I had to pick top three and if somebody was listening to me and saying, oh, if I could look back like 10 years, right? And uh, what I would tell my younger self is, uh, you know, be curious. Uh, always be curious. You know, sometimes uh, personally, like I didn't in India, maybe we don't come from an education system where curiosity is rewarded. I've just realized that if I met a young person, all I will tell them is be curious. You know, because right, then you yeah. ask questions and you go to find answers for those questions. And then the beauty of that journey is you learn so much and where you land is equally as beautiful as your journey. Also, failing early in life is very important. You know, that is another thing. There are people, uh, especially, you know, uh, when you work at big tech like Google, Facebook, you know, it's filled with smart people. And some of these people have never failed in their lives they've just been great and good at everything you know it's like you pick a person maybe somebody who's at michael today you know the people who had 99 percent in their board exams and then you know went to the biggest undergrad school the best and then now are at michael top of their class right never failed will be at their job maybe a year later two years later it'll happen to everybody where they you know get a meets expectations and they're not exceeding expectations if life they've not they've not been prepared in life on how to deal with failure people just fall flat and then there are certain moments yeah. in your career where you know it doesn't benefit you like you know uh, it does harm you a lot if you just fall flat and you can't pick yourself up the third thing is and i think this could be quite relevant to you know uh, your peers and you guys is don't think about five year plans and 10 year plans so when I was, uh, I guess, interviewing for jobs or, you know, when I was younger, people would always say, so what is your five year plan? Right. And I mean, think about it. Yeah. Like TikTok didn't even exist 10 years ago. Right. So if I wanted to work at, <laughs> if I wanted to work at a company, let's say, for example, like how much, how much things have changed, you know, it's just showing. Could you have ever imagined that there could be people online who are 18 years old, live streaming themselves and making a million dollars or on YouTube? just talking about stuff that's interesting and making a million dollars. No, those careers didn't exist. So mm. what is what does it tell us that the world is changing very fast? We are living in the best and the most technologically advanced times that humanity's ever had. And we blink of an eye, things will change, right? So if you plan for five years, you kind of you're planning for redundancy rather than growth. Mm. 